Hello and welcome to another quick bit tutorial. In this one we're going to create a uh, sort of randomized semi-procedural forest thing um, using some free assets that I found. I think I still have the window open. Uh, I don't. One second. Using this uh, low poly forest pack uh, that I found by David Stenfors. So if you like that, um, be sh I'll leave a link in the, uh, in the description. Be sure to go check that out. So um, all I've got so far is I've just got a ground uh, which is just a quad with a green material on it uh, and I've stuck a little just a little controller on the camera just so I can move around so I mean you won't be able to tell anything because it's just a plain green ground but they could, I can look around left and right not up and down and I can move around that's the only thing I've done to set things up and I messed around with some post-processing stuff to make the uh, the visuals look a bit different but that's completely irrelevant to this tutorial so just ignore that. So if we go into our scripts folder we're going to create a new script and we'll call this um, forest generator for lack of a more imaginative title and we'll go straight into here. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we want a public int and we're going to call this um, forest size. Uh, just by default, we will set it at 25. And of course, you'll be able to change that in the actual um, inspector. And then we're going to need a second public int, which we're going to call element spacing. Now, an element, I'm going to set this to three. This is based on values that I've come to while messing around with this script before doing this video. So I'm not just pulling these numbers out of thin air and they happen to look about right. I have actually worked this out beforehand. Um, an element is going to be a thing that we place in the forest. So for the most part, it's going to be trees, but it could also be rocks, uh, small plants, whatever you decide to put in your forest. And then we're going to need a public class. So we will call this uh, element. And it needs to be serializable because we're going to be entirely setting this in the inspector. So just for our own ease, we'll give it a name string so we can see what type of class, uh, type of element this is. Uh, and then we're going to give it a game object, which we'll call prefab. So then we'll go back up here and we're going to create a array of these elements. Now if we head back into Unity, we'll create an empty object, which we'll call forest. Reset the position on that and drag our forest controller generator on here. So we have our elements array, right now there's nothing in it. So we're gonna create one element, which we'll call trees. And uh, I have a folder here full of prefabs that I've set up for this because the, the prefabs in this asset, they're a little off in that the origin point of each model is like halfway up the tree. So <laughs> it's it's a bit awkward because the um, it's not always dead halfway. So I can't come up with code to place it at the right height. So I, I've gone through and created an empty game object and then placed the tree inside it so that it's at the right height. So we're spawn we're going to be spawning in this game object prefab that has the tree model inside it at the correct height. So we'll just pick one of these at random and then we'll put that in there. Now we'll go back to our script and we're just going to create a loop. We'll just copy that and change that for Z. So we want to be getting our element, which at the minute we only have one. So we'll just say element, element equals elements zero, because we only have one element. And then we want a position which will be a new vector three um, x zero because everything on this test world is all flat. There's no terrain to worry about. If you were 
applying this to uh, say some standard unity terrain you'll be able to pass in the terrain height float to this here so you'll be able to get the height quite easily whatever or whatever terrain system you're using or mesh or where, basically whatever height you wanted to put it at you just feed that into there and it would take care of it from there we're going to create a new game object call it new element equals instantiate element dot prefab and then we're going to set our new elements position to position so now if we go in here so uh, sorry I'll just clear this up so we're looping from zero to the forest size that we've set, obviously, uh, and we're incrementing by element spacing. So that means that uh, currently we've got it set to three. So that means that every three units in world space, we're going to put an element down. And at the minute, we've only got one element. So that element is always going to be that same tree. But that's what's happening, basically. We're looping in a two-dimensional grid, and every three units, we're going to put down a tree. So there we have a very, very dull, uniform looking forest. So let's start to make things a little bit more interesting. I'll take Maximize off so we can look at it in the scene view as well. To start with, let's add another Vector 3. And we're going to call this one Offset. And it's going to equal a new Vector 3. And we're going to do random.range. We'll just put a hard coding number. We'll just put a hard coded in number for now. But you could you could tie this into your element spacing. Like you could have it be um, element spacing divided by two or something like that. But for now, I'm just gonna for the, for the sake of speed, I'm just gonna put in a hard coded number. So we'll put minus 0.75f to 0.75f. Then we'll just copy that again. We don't need anything on the y-axis because everything is flat. And then that's that. So it's just going to give us a, a vector offset that's a random amount. It's just enough to vary things so they look a bit less uniform, but not so much that it's going to encroach on the next tree or element or whatever because the three are apart. So they could get close to each other, but they're not going to touch each other. So then all we just do there is we add our offset to our position. If we try it now, our tree should look a little bit more organic. So there we go. Let's try and find a tree. Uh, there we go. So now they don't look so, like, gritty. <laughs> a, a, a little bit more uh, organic looking. But we've still got a ways to go. So we're going to add another Vector 3. And this one we're going to call Rotation. And as you may have guessed already, we're going to create a random rotation. So on the x-axis and the z-axis, that's essentially tilt. So we don't want a lot of that because you, you could end up with trees that are like at a 45 degree angle, which maybe you're going for if you're going for like a creepy forest or something like that. But we don't uh, we don't want that in that. We're in this. We're just making a fairly average looking forest. However, the Y rotation, that is basically a vertical rotation. So that is if you were to take the tree and turn it, then this is the rotation that you would use. And for that, we want to have the full range of motion. We want it to be facing in any which direction it wants. So for that one, we're going to set it to F. And now that we have that, we'll go down here and we set our Euler angles. I'll we'll try that again. We should once again have something a little bit more. See now our trees don't look all so straight and stiff. And obviously we have our um, offset placement. So they're starting to look a little less procedurally placed. Which is what we're going for. Uh, and the last thing we're going to do here, before we work on something a little bit different, is we're going to give it a slightly randomized scale. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to set it to vector3.1. So that's basically the same scale as it is, 111. One, one. But then we're going to times it by a random dot range. Uh, and we will go 
0 0.75, so that will be three quarters of the size that it is, to 1.25, so that will be one and a quarter the size that it is. And then nice and easily we just set that, transform, local scale, equals scale. And just to keep everything neat, we're also going to set the parent to the um, forest generator object, because we don't want trees all floating around the hierarchy. So there we have um, slightly different rotation, slightly different placement, slightly different scale on each tree. Just makes things look a bit more interesting. But it's still a pretty boring forest. So let's uh, let's try and make things even more interesting. So, so if we go back down to our element class, we're going to change this to an array. We we'll call it prefabs, and we're going to create a simple class to get easily get an object out of that array. So this is a public game object. It's just going to return a game object, uh, and we'll just call it get random. And all we're going to put in here is return prefabs, and then for the index random dot range zero to prefabs dot length and that's all that does and then for this we just want element get random and then if we go to our forest and we see this now we have a uh, an array instead of a single object so if I just put the one tree back in there, I can't actually remember which tree it was, but if I just put the one tree back in there, it doesn't really make any difference to our forest. As you can see, we've still got um, just a bland everyday forest with slightly organic looking trees, but still pretty bland. But if we change this, how many trees have I got here? One, two, six. So if I change this to six, and then I drag each of these tree prefabs in, and then I run it, now we have something considerably more <laughs> messy. I guess would be a would be a good word to describe it. But it looks a lot less like it's just some computer generated fake forest thing. So we'll add another layer of um, organicness to it, organic lookingness to it. That's not a word to it. By uh, we're going to create a public bull. Well, actually, first we need a public int, which we're going to call density, and we're going to lock this to a range, and the range is going to be zero, which actually, no, it's not going to be zero, because if it's zero, then you don't need it there at all, because that won't place any, to ten. And, the re and we need to, like, so you could change this to say for example 100 if you wanted it doesn't have to be 10 if you wanted to have like a more finer tuned control um but basically all we're going to do next is uh, so for our public bull we'll put uh we'll call it cam place and all we're going to do is if random dot range 0 to 10 is less than and then whatever our density is then we return true, else we return false. And what this is doing is, is every time we get a random number, like I say, you could change this to 100, you'd have to change this to 100 as well if you did that. But you could have it higher and you could have a finer control over it. But every time we check this cam place, we're gonna get a random number between zero and 10. And if that number is below our density, then we place it. Or we return true in this case. So it, the higher the density, the more likely that it's going to return true, which means when we put our if check in here, the more likely we're going to be placing something. So up here, because we don't want to do any of this if we're not going to be placing it. So up here, we're just going to put if element dot can place. And then we'll just close all these in brackets. And then we go back in here and we set our density. We'll give it a, we'll just give it a value of five for now. 
Now, as you can see, there's far fewer trees because our density is about 50-50, so about half the time it's not going to be placing trees. And we can up that to 8, for example. And we'll have far more trees. But still not as many as if we had it all the way up to 10. So I found 6 to be quite a satisfying number for the trees. And then obviously I can increase the size of the forest to make it look a bit more interesting. But we're still not done. So as you can see, this was an array. This is an array here, which implies that we're going to be putting more elements in than just trees, which we are. So first, let's go back to our code and write what we need to do to handle that. So we're going to put another for loop here. And we're going to put for int i equals 0. i is less than elements.length. And then just i plus plus. And we want to enclose all of this inside that for loop. And then instead of equaling the first one, it's going to equal whatever our current iteration is in the elements. So the one thing that we do need to do now is because we're basically we're giving priority. So we have our array here. Trees are currently first, and then we've got some plants and some rocks. So we're going to put plants and rocks as our next two uh, elements. We're giving priority to trees. So basically that means if there's a tree there, we can't put anything else down. There's already something in that spot. So we need to go down to here and put a break so that if we have placed a tree, we're not looping through to the next element. We're just skipping out of this for loop and then going to the next coordinate and checking what's there. So with that in mind, let's go in here, increase the size of our array, call this one plants, uh, and how many plants do I have? Two. And then for density for plants, we will we want that to be quite high. So we'll put that to eight. And then our final one, rocks. So, and remember the priority works all the way down. So if there is a tree, we can't place a plant there. If there's a tree, we can't place a plant there. If there's a plant, we can't place a rock there. If there's a tree or a plant, we can't place a rock. So rocks always come last. If rocks are most important to you when you're doing this, then you want rocks to be top of the list. And then density for rocks, I'm going to put quite low. And now it's a far more interesting forest to look at. Although it still looks a bit sparse when you can see the horizon. So, uh, what size is my ground? Ground is 500 by 500. So let's make this, let's just make it 500. And now the frame rate's gone to hell. Obviously, if you were, if you were doing this properly, you'd have... Uh, level of detail and you you wouldn't have 500 by 500s worth of forests all at once um but you get the idea i'll just lower that down a bit and we can have a look at it full screen uh but that that is essentially everything so i mean you can mess around with the details you can add more elements um like i say if you wanted to put this on actual terrain you would just pass in a height value where I've got 0f for the y you would put in an actual height value so that any given element is placed at the correct height but uh, other than that this this is a fully functional random forest generatory thingy so I hope this was in some way useful for you um, let me know if there's any other thing like this that you'd like me to uh, to go over obviously I will get back to the Minecraft stuff. This isn't taking the place of that or anything. I just like to do these little videos to break it up every now and again. Uh, next week will probably be a Minecraft video again. But uh, for now, that is everything. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. hope you found it useful. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.